The Honorable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise tonight in adjournment proceedings to pursue a question that I asked in this House during question period on the uh, on 25th of March, so some time has passed. Uh, the question that I asked pertains to the extent of not just Canadian involvement in Ukraine, which I think all members here want to see us do what we can to restore uh, freedom, security, and peace to the region. There's tremendous concern across Canada about Putin's aggression, and there is no question about that. My question actually goes to the matter of the engagement of Parliament when we make decisions about foreign affairs, particularly those that increasingly bring us within the range of hostilities with another country with whom we have, for other purposes, the relationship of allies. And I speak of Russia. We have, uh, through all sorts of manner of trade arrangements, through other multilateral agreements, we have relations with Russia. We are not at war with Russia. And we are trying, and I believe can Canadians would want to, to press Putin to withdraw from Ukraine. There's a lot here of which we have in common. The question that I asked on March 25th was, was this, was to the Prime Minister, that in relation to our support for Ukraine, that the extent of Canada's involvement is not clear and public on the website of DFAT-D. We do not necessarily know, uh, other, except through the media, about the provision of radar sat 2 data to Ukraine. And we do, apparently, as, as it's been reported over the objections of the Department of National Defense and of the Department of, of Foreign Affairs. And I also asked point blank that I'd heard that there is a memorandum of understanding between Canada and Ukraine. And I asked the Prime Minister to confirm if such a memorandum of understanding exists and to share with parliamentarians when that memorandum of understanding would be tabled with this House. Now, the response I received from the Minister of Foreign Affairs spoke to those things about which we all agree and all know that Canada is standing with the people of Ukraine, um, and we will continue to stand with the people of Ukraine. But it didn't, it actually was a, a response, and this isn't a shock in this place, but it was a response that was not responsive. Now, since the time I asked that question, I've also learned that the uh, Ukraine is not satisfied with the quality of data it's receiving through Department of National Defense in the radar set to data. Additional requests have been made of Canada to actually place a radar set to station in Ukraine so that the uh, Ukrainian government is able to more quickly access this radar set to data. This is highly technical material, Mr. Speaker. It actually takes DND trained personnel to massage the data to be able to tell Ukraine what it says and what it means. So I, I would pursue this again with the parliamentary secretary to the extent that he's able to share this with us. And it, again, this is an area where I think we'll all be in agreement, but unlike the situation in Iraq and Syria where we had a debate in this House and talked about what's being planned, we find out in dribs and drabs what Canada is doing to assist Ukraine. And increasingly in a military context, we know we have people there, Canadian military, to help in the training. So my question again is, is there a memorandum of understanding between Canada and Ukraine? Will the House be uh, able to review this? Will we have a debate on this? And is it true that we are now contemplating putting a satellite system in Ukraine, which if by any chance it was struck in conflict, would actually compromise our access to radar set 2 data for all the other things Canada needs that data uh, for, for whether it's weather or uh, information about Canada, we need that data to be secure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, my colleague opposite has brought up a whole host of issues, and uh, certainly I'm, here, I'm glad to be here tonight to speak about our broad support for Ukraine, and I think she'll uh, hopefully get some information here that, that will uh, help her to understand that. We're a leading supporter of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We continue to strongly condemn the actions taken by Russia, including its illegal annexation of Crimea and its efforts to destabilize southern and eastern Ukraine. Uh, we have repeatedly called on Russia to withdraw its forces and immediately de-escalate the situation. On February 13, 2015, uh, we joined other G7 leaders in, in welcoming the, it was called the Package of Measures for the Implementation of the Minsk Agreements, adopted on February 12, 2015. 
and urged all sides to adhere strictly to the provisions of the package and carry out its measures without delay. Russia's provocative military activity remains a serious concern to the international community and cannot go unanswered. Uh, we've been at the forefront of the international community's response to this crisis and have provided a deep and wide-ranging support to Ukraine, including humanitarian and development assistance, financial aid, and non-lethal military aid. To support Ukraine's uh, security and stability, Canada has provided $16 million in non-lethal security equipment to Ukraine's armed forces, including winter clothing, a mobile field hospital, explosive ordnance disposal equipment, and other goods. In addition, we're deploying approximately 200 Canadian Armed Forces personnel to Ukraine until March 31st of 2017 to develop and deliver training and capacity building programs for Ukrainian Forces personnel. We've also imposed a broad range of sanctions against more than 270 Russian and Ukrainian individuals and entities. In terms of assistance to Ukraine, Canada is providing $400 million in low-interest loans to help Ukraine stabilize its economy, as well over $202 million has been announced in bilateral development assistance projects. Humanitarian assistance has been provided to help an estimated 5 million people uh, who are affected by the violence in Ukraine. In the face of Russian aggression, Canada has contributed to NATO assurance measures and $1 million to the NATO trust funds, as well as $3 million to NATO centers of excellence to assist allies in Eastern Europe. Within the broad range of support that Canada is providing, uh, we'll also, we are also sharing radar sat two satellite products with Ukrainian authorities. A member opposite had asked about that. At a time when the international community is closely monitoring Russia's implementation of the Minsk commitments, this technology allows Ukraine to have much better situational awareness. Ukraine's political stability is imperative. Canada continues to strongly support the OSCE's special monitoring mission. We've just announced an additional $2 million contribution to it, as well as an extension to the term of Canadian monitors. So Canada's assistance to Ukraine is multifaceted. We remain co committed to supporting Ukraine as it resists Russian aggression while undertaking the reforms necessary to ensure Ukraine's future as a democratic, stable, and prosperous country. The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Well, I really appreciate my, my friend, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, sharing what he did. I do think that the Parliament of Canada needs to know more about uh, the nature of our commitments to Ukraine in terms of radar sat 2 data, and I am still very curious, and I, I, I don't yet have an answer, and I don't, um, I'm certainly grateful to my, my friend, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, for sharing as much as he did. But I, I would appreciate it if, if the Parliamentary Secretary isn't certain if such a memorandum of understanding exists, if he would take it upon himself to ask the Minister, because I think Canadians know that the Parliament of Canada is the place where we review our, our, our commitments, whether militarily, internationally. We discuss, we debate in this place, and it, it really is, I think, important that all members of Parliament be fully informed about the extent of our commitments overseas, even in those cases, or even particularly in those cases, where we're going to be in broad agreement. But a, a memorandum of understanding, should it exist in the, in the context of our constitutional monarchy and our uh, Westminster parliamentary democracy, should not be executed solely by the executive on its own. I think we, we would want to know to what we are committed, uh, even if we're in agreement as a matter of respect for the supremacy of Parliament, uh, that memorandum of understanding should be made available to members. And again, I thank my honourable colleague, the Parliamentary Secretary, uh, uh, for whom I have nothing but deep respect. Thank you. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Uh, I can be reassured that we, can, we yeah. have made a commitment to continue to be at the forefront of it, the international community's support for Ukraine's long-term stability, for its security and for its prosperity. We view the situation in Ukraine with the gravest concern. We remain uh, committed to a political and diplomatic solution to the conflict. As the, station, or as the situation evolves, Canada will also continue to cooperate closely with its G7 partners, the NATO allies, and other like-minded countries. We are committed to supporting the humanitarian, uh, the political, and the economic well-being of the Ukrainian people through this difficult period. We expect the government of Ukraine to demonstrate true commitment to reform by implementing key priority reforms in the coming year. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.